One of the really cool things about collecting old math books is that sometimes you find books that belong to famous or interesting people. This book actually belonged to a famous mathematician. In this video, we're going to take a look at this book and talk a little bit about the person who owned this book before me. Also, this book is free, and this book itself was written by a very, very famous mathematician known as H.B. Phillips. H.B. Phillips was a professor of mathematics at MIT, which is the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He worked there for several years, and then he became the chair of the math department. So in essence, he was the MIT math boss. This is one of his books. It's called Vector Analysis, and the book is available for free on the internet. Let's open it up and see what we find in this book. R. Liebler, Vector Analysis, Northwestern University, Professor, and I can't make out the name, September 1934. So I did some research and I found out who R. Liebler was. It turns out R. Liebler was an American mathematician and cryptanalyst. He was born in 1914. That means he was 20 years old when he was using this book. He received his AM in math from Northwestern and his PhD from the University of Illinois. He's known for something called the kullback leibler divergence, which is a type of statistical distance, basically. But yeah, very cool. He's got his own Wikipedia page. You can look him up. His name is Richard Liebler. Kind of cool. So let's open up this book and keep exploring some of the math we find in this book. Vector analysis. Here's some of the other works by H.B. Phillips, PhD. I have all of these books except the geometry book. H.P. Phillips, Professor of Mathematics, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Super old book. This one's in really, really good condition. This book is very rare, so I will try to leave links to the physical copy, and I'll leave some info about Liebler uh, in the description as well. I don't know if I'll be able to find any physical copies, but you can just Google the book and get it for free because it's so old, it's in the public domain. Here's who the book is for. It is the object of this book to present vector analysis in the form that is required for work in theoretical electricity and hydrodynamics. For these subjects, what is needed is the analysis of vector fields and the study of the quantities which characterize each type of field. These quantities have essentially the same form and properties in whatever field they occur. The discussion of such matters in a separate course rather than their gradual introduction in connection with one of the typical fields, has the advantage of showing which results follow merely from mathematics and which are dependent on physical hypotheses. Cool. In broad outline, the book consists of two parts. The first five chapters cover the fundamental operations and the more general properties of scalar and vector fields. The remaining chapters contain the detailed analysis of fields, the properties of potentials, and linear vector functions. In an elementary course, the work might be restricted mainly to the first five chapters, together with selected topics from the others. The author is indebted to Charlotte T. Perry for assistance in the entire preparation of the manuscript and revision of the proof. Cambridge, Massachusetts, February 1933. Really, really cool. So much history, right? And, and in 34, 20 year old Richard Liebler, who unfortunately passed away at the age of 89 in 2003, used this book at Northwestern University to study vector analysis. I mean, it's just the history that comes with these books. Let's take a look at the contents here. Elementary operations, so definitions, addition and subtraction of vectors, multiplication by a scalar, linear functions, rectangular coordinates, the scalar product of two vectors, work vector product, rotation about a fixed axis, moment of a force, products involving three or more vectors, functions of a single scalar variable, derivative, linear vector or differential equations, and then dynamics of a particle or system of particles. That's chapter one, that's just elementary operations. Notice the page numbers. This is very characteristic of the books by H.B. Phillips. He moves very, very quickly. Chapter two is on partial differentiation. That might seem familiar to many of you if you've had some calculus, functions of position, continuity, gradient of a scalar function. We have the operator, the differential ration formulas, functional relations, divergence and curl of a vector. These are calc three topics. Then we have some integration here, space curves, line integral, some other things there. Let's turn the page, see what else we have in this classic book. 
I'll just go slowly through it so you can read the topics if you like. Stokes theorem, it's got general coordinates, curve linear coordinates, reciprocal systems, orthogonal coordinates, a lot of topics that you might not have seen before. Irrotational and solenoidal vectors, electrostatic fields. We have some more contents here. Harmonic functions, you might see those perhaps uh, if you've studied complex variables, that's a common place where undergraduate students in mathematics first see harmonic functions. Scalar and vector potentials. Let's turn the page. This, this copy is in very, very good condition, so I'll try to be careful. Retarded potentials, linear vector functions. There's an index. Let's read the, the beginning of the book. Vector Analysis Chapter 1, Elementary Operations. By the way, H.P. Phillips was a very, very famous professor. Um, if, you, if you just Google his name, you'll find out all kinds of information. I'm pretty sure his pictures uh, on some MIT website. I mean, the guy was a legendary teacher. And then he became the chair, again, the boss of the math teachers. Definitions. The quantities of physics can be divided into two classes namely those having magnitude only and those having magnitude and direction. A quantity characterized by magnitude only or magnitude and an algebraic sign is called a scalar. Thus, mass, time, density, coordinates are scalars. When units of measurement have been chosen, a scalar is represented by a real number and so is subject to all the laws of ordinary algebra. A quantity which has direction as well as magnitude is called a vector. Force, velocity, acceleration are illustrations. Such a quantity is represented graphically by an arrow of length equal to its magnitude pointing in the assigned directions. And then it talks about vectors here a little bit more. So it's very, very brief. Let's turn the page. I've read small portions of this book and it's just very, very concise to the point. Let's keep going. Let's get to the end of the section so we can see what we have. So vector product, moment of force, products involving three or more vectors, single scalar variable, a lot of geometric arguments I've found, oh, what's this, what's this, someone wrote something here, I wonder if it was Richard Leibler, or Liebler. No, he got excited about something here. <laughs> a young Richard Liebler, right, 20 years old, studying vector analysis. Here are the problems. We've got some exercises here. A, B are vectors forming consecutive sides of a parallelogram. Find the vectors forming the other two sides. Oh, look at this. We've got the triangle inequality and the reverse triangle inequality in problem number four. That might seem familiar to some of you. Let's turn the page. Lots of exercises here, right? 33 problems so far. And a lot of it is geometric, which makes sense. You know, we're talking about vectors. 53, 53 problems. Wow. That is a lot. 50, and that, that, those are the exercises for chapter one. So the exercises are at the end of the chapter. And at the back of the book, if you look in the back, uh, in this particular book, um, I don't believe there's answers, just an index. In the other books by H.P. Phillips, he does, in a lot of the other books, he does have answers. Oh, what's this? What's this? Look at this. This looks like Liebler's handwriting. Let me just go back to the beginning. Well, he signed it here in cursive. So back in the day, this is cursive. People used to learn cursive in school. I mean, even I used to know cursive when I was a kid, but I just know how to sign my name now. I don't know really cursive anymore, but cursive was uh, something that was taught and people learned it. I actually had an advanced calculus professor who wrote all of, exams, all of his exams in cursive, and then he just like photocopied them. Pretty nuts. Yeah, it looks like he's got some important information here on the back. It's probably Liebler because this was his book. This was his book. Pretty interesting how it ended up in my hands. You know, you wonder how that happens. Um, several years ago, I was at an estate sale, actually, and uh, the person who passed away was a famous nuclear physicist. And all of his math books were on sale, and they were all extremely inexpensive. It was really, really sad. And I didn't buy them all because I didn't have any money with me. Um, so but I bought some of them, so yeah. Harmonic functions, Laplace's equation in orthogonal coordinates. Interesting. Electrostatic fields. 
So just a nice free book that you can pick up uh, for free and start reading and learn some mathematics. Look at Liebler. Look at Liebler. This is page 130, and he is still he is still plugging away. That that says something about his work ethic. A lot of times, when you pick up old books like this, you'll find that the people who you know work through the book, they'll 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 have notes and they'll work through it. But like after they get through like page 30, you know, there's less and less writing. But not Liebler. Liebler apparently kept pushing through, kept pushing through and kept studying. Maybe it was the professor who basically just, you know, covered, you know, a big part of the book. Northwestern University is is a really good school. I wonder who the professor is. I mean, I'm going to zoom in here so you can see it. I don't know. Can you make that out? If you can, leave a comment. Is it is it Hamilton? Is it Milton? Moulton? I should do some research and find out uh, if I can, who that professor was in September 1934. Wow, wow. It's got to give it a whiff here. This book smells amazing. Ah, oh, awesome. Anyways, I will leave a link uh, in the description to the book if I can find the physical book. It's just a very, very rare book. It's out of print, but it's free. You can just Google it and get it for free. And yeah, anyways, kind of an interesting math book with some interesting topics and just some history, right? It's owned by Richard Liebler, who lived to be 89 years old and is, again, known for the callback liebler divergence, which is a type of statistical distance. Basically, it measures how one probability distribution is different from a second. Um, it's just a type of distance. Liebler is also credited by the NSA as having opened up new methods of attack, it says on Wikipedia. So pretty cool. All kinds of stuff that uh, Liebler did for the world, perhaps. But yeah, pretty cool to have a book uh, that was owned by a famous mathematician. I hope this video has been helpful. Oh, if you want to learn mathematics, just a reminder, I do have courses uh, on my website, mathsorcerer.com. Check them out. And if you're not a subscriber, consider hitting subscribe today. Until next time, good luck and take care.